Hello, uh, welcome back if you um, have watched before and welcome if you're new here. My name is Haley and this is my channel At Home with Haley. And in this video, I'm going to show you three uh, recipes that I've tried recently that my family really enjoyed um, and that I hope that you will uh, possibly try or try a version of and see if your family likes it too. So um, I'm going to just walk you through these three recipes and hope you enjoy them as well. Um, if you like this video, uh, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you think you would like to come back and watch some more content, please subscribe. It'll really help me out. Um, and I hope you enjoy. Thanks. All right, so let's get started. Um, that there was a rotisserie chicken. Uh, we are making chicken enchiladas. So um, I got this rotisserie chicken at Food Lion. Um, I just got a cold one because I knew I would be cooking this the next day so it didn't need to be warm. But they do, if you're going to cook it that day, they do break apart a lot easier when they're warm. So just keep that in mind. But I'm just going to get the meat off this rotisserie chicken <laughs> shredded. Um, and then mix it up with the other filling. Um, and these were really good. I'm making enchiladas again this week. Um, but I'm going to try it with ground turkey. Um, and then the other thing that I found with this is that in this video you'll see me use um, only one block of cream cheese. And only one can of enchilada sauce. And I split it halfway in the filling and then half I put on top and I bought well I was gonna buy two cans but I bought just a really big can this time so um, you see now I'm putting in one block of cream cheese I didn't feel like that was enough for this amount of chicken um, and I did soften that just a little bit in the microwave for about 20 seconds um, before I mixed it in with the chicken so I'm just getting that mixed in um, and then also you put in some um, shredded cheese as well. So I did find it a little hard to mix this in. So this time when I use the two uh, cream cheese, I'm going to melt them more. Um, but then here you see I'm putting that uh, shredded cheese. This is just like a Mexican blend. Um, so I think I did about half the pack. Uh, I think it was a three cup pack. And then I put, so you put, I think I put a little more than half in the filling. But that one little can just wasn't enough for all this filling and to put on top. So definitely get two cans or a much bigger can um, than what I did. But now you're just going to take, I have flour tortillas. I couldn't find any corn tortillas that were this big. They were all very small and I didn't want small tiny enchiladas. So um, I did flour. It did fine. It crisps up really good you'll see here in just a minute um, but just put a little bit of that filling into each enchilada or each flour tortilla and roll those up kind of tight um, I did them tighter than I would do like a taco typically I would have more filling in a top taco than this uh, so roll them up sort of skinny and then just line them up I did spray the pans I'm using um, so I got all those rolled up, spread that additional enchilada sauce on top, definitely could have used more. Like I said, um, the ends got pretty crispy because I think they didn't have that on there. Um, but also, I did forget to put the cheese on top, so I just kind of pulled them halfway out of the oven to get that part done. And then with this, I just thought this yellow rice would be really good to go with it. I have two packs which calls for four cups of water so I'm gonna get that boiling and then I'm also gonna do black beans so nice little um, Mexican kind of dinner and everyone really liked it this rice from Aldi the yellow rice from Aldi is really tasty so I would recommend trying that even if you're not doing enchiladas if you do tacos or taco salad one night or something like that uh, burritos whatever um, or just <laughs> as a side it doesn't have to be Mexican night 
uh, put a little bit of garlic and onion powder and some sea salt into those black beans just to give it some flavor. Um, sometimes I buy the pre-seasoned ones if they have them. And then it was one tablespoon per box for this rice of butter. So that was about two tablespoons. I just eyeballed it. I didn't measure. And then uh, now that the water's boiling, getting the rice in there and the flavor packets and just going to mix that in real good. Um, and then I think it is a little while you have to, you let this boil for a minute and then you turn it down uh, to a simmer and put the lid on. But here they are finished. You can see they got pretty crispy on the ends. But the middles were really good. It was all really good. So here it is plated. Really yummy. I would definitely um, suggest it. Alright, now we're moving on to stuffed shells. So I got a, I believe a 16 ounce container of ricotta cheese. And I'm going to mix that in. Um, this is your filling. So... Uh, gonna mix that in with um, I think it's mozzarella shredded cheese you'll see here in a minute and some Parmesan grated cheese so we'll get that all mixed together um, for this filling so yeah there's the mozzarella I did not use the whole <laughs> bag I did put some on the top um, of the shells before I put it in the oven too but I don't really measure. I probably got half of this bag out uh, for the filling. And then, like I said, uh, Parmesan, I wasn't going to measure, but I realized I really would have used way too much if I didn't. So then I do end up, I start to pour, and then I'm like, hang on, let me just do this. Because I would have put way too much. Um, so I think it was half a cup. We'll see here. In just a second um, yeah so about half a cup of Parmesan mix all that in together and then with one egg as well so you do want to make sure you cook this well once you get it into the oven um, to get that egg cooked up so these were really good um, you'll see with the sauce I do ground turkey in it you don't have to do that you can just do spaghetti sauce or mozzarella sauce on top by itself but I knew my husband would say where's the meat <laughs> so I did I did it in there with it so I got a little bit of Italian seasoning I think it said two teaspoons or something I didn't measure that um just eyeballed it I'm going to get that mixed in there as well. And, of course, you also um, need to get your shells going. So, this water was on the stove while I was getting my um, filling. One pack of jumbo shells. It calls for 24 shells in the recipe, but I ended up being able to put more than 24 in the pan. And I had enough filling for a little more than 24. I think maybe I did 28. Um, and there were like 36 in the pack or something. All right. And like I said, I do ground turkey a lot more than I do ground beef. So I'm getting this ground turkey, um, <laughs> browned up. Um, this was two pounds. So at the end I did see how I'm like kind of splitting it in half. I put some of I put half of it in the freezer to use for something else because I really didn't feel like I needed but one pound for um, just to put on top of these stuffed shells so I mixed in some marinara just one jar when I'm doing two pounds I do two jars but uh, one pound of meat I did one jar of marinara I'm gonna put some of that at the bottom of this dish that I also did spray with some cooking spray um, and just kind of cover the bottom of the dish to keep um, those shells moist and not sticking to the bottom and also get some flavor on the back of there so then you'll take your shells some of them are going to be broken it just happens um, but try to pick out the ones that look good and line them up get them filled up with that filling and see how some I stacked on top of each other 
and then put the rest of your um, marinara and meat or not just marinara if you want um, mixture on top and then the rest of that mozzarella cheese I just sprinkled on top of there so that when I bake this in the oven it gets nice and melty so there it oh and then I <laughs> I don't know if it said to do this but I put some parmesan on top as well all right and then into the oven I forgot to preheat my <laughs> oven or no I think I had started it and then I stopped it for some reason I don't know my mind sometimes is not good but anyway getting this in there um i think i set it for 20 minutes um maybe you can see better on there but then you pull the oh it's with foil on it at first then you pull the foil off and i think you do it an additional 10 minutes <laughs> maybe i will show you hold on um yep one zero okay so 20 minutes with the cover on 10 with it off melty delicious um i thought these were really great and the kids like them too so i'm gonna show you a little bit there onto the plate yum um I didn't make anything else with these that night. I should have done a vegetable, but um, I think you could see it was like 8 o'clock already when I was making this. So, um, this is all we got that night. But look at that cheesy goodness. I mean, it was just fantastic. Who doesn't like pasta cheese and tomato sauce? I mean, honestly. And here's me struggling to get any on my fork. Um... But yeah, it was really good. Meat or not, but I like the meat in it. Gave it a little bit more texture. All right, here we are. Recipe number three, starting with some boneless, skinless chicken breasts. This is a crock pot meal. Um, so it calls for four chicken breasts. And what we're making is chicken and dumplings. Um, so you get the four chicken breasts in there. They can be frozen if you're gonna let this sit all day, which I did. This was a little after eight in the morning. I was about to get started working. Had just dropped the kids off at school. I'm trying to pick my favorite chicken. <laughs> all right, so, oh, nope, still haven't made up my mind. There we go. And I did wash my hands after I touched that raw chicken, so in case you're worried can of cream of chicken um and then you're also gonna see here in a minute a can of cream of celery which i can never find at aldi so um i had to go to food line to get that <coughs> excuse me um and then you're also gonna do two cups of chicken broth and then it also called for like some kind of chicken seasoning so i put I didn't have bouillon cubes mine went out of date but I had this like bouillon kind of um, I don't know it was a jar of like <laughs> like liquidy bouillon but it says it's vegan it doesn't actually have chicken stuff in it so I don't know it was given to me by my sister-in-law <laughs> she probably didn't like it um, but this turned out good my husband likes this better than I do I probably would so here you'll see later um, it caught the recipe called for carrots and peas but we opted for carrots peas green beans and corn like a bag of frozen all right see that's better than bouillon but it says vegan not actual chicken product I sniffed it <laughs> And I think it was two teaspoons, but I just eyeballed it and got a little bit out onto a spoon. So I probably got way too much. Um, but it didn't taste bad. It was fine. But anyway, um, I didn't like the corn in it, the texture that that brought. So, and my husband didn't like the green beans in it. So we probably should have just went with what the recipe called for, which was carrots and peas. All right, so two cups of 
chicken broth. Sometimes I get the low sodium one. This time I did not. Um, but there's there's sodium in all kinds of these things, the soup and everything. So, all right, and then you just get that put in here. Um, I might have put some pepper. I'm not sure. Here we go. We're about to see. Yep. And I just opened the back of my pepper because <laughs> it comes out of the top too slow. All right, so I kind of stirred it around a little bit just to get um, a little bit of stuff on each of those chicken uh, breasts. But then you just uh, put it on low, leave it all day. So this was, like I said, a little after 8. And then around 4 o'clock, I... Um, Oh, that's before it started. That's not finished. I'm just showing you how it looks in there. And then I'm going to close it up. So I just kind of left it alone until I think 4 o'clock. I didn't touch it. Um, and then once it's been a while, <laughs> 8 hours or so, um, you get your chicken out and you want to shred that up. So I started with just taking a couple pieces out at a time. Um, and then I would shred those, put it back in, and then do the next ones. It shreds so easy. You can see just barely have to pull on it. It's been in there so long. Um, it did have a really good flavor. So you'll see here in just a minute, we put the um, vegetables in. And then what you do is you use canned biscuits, and you make them flat. Then you cut them up, and you put them on top, and then you leave them for like an hour. Now, I don't know. I left them for an hour. They didn't look done, so I stirred them in. And then we had to go to a volleyball game. So it was another hour-ish. Um, and we came home and they were cooked in there, but I felt like there was too many dumplings. <laughs> like I was having a search for the chicken. And my husband felt like there was not enough dumplings. He loves dumplings. So, um... I don't know. Next time I won't do the corn and green beans. And I thought maybe I would make the dumplings separate. And that way I could just eat like chicken soup um, with a few dumplings. I could just pick how many dumplings I want. And then he could get like a whole bunch of dumplings with barely any soup. So this wasn't my favorite. I definitely really loved the enchiladas. I thought those were great. Like I said, I'm doing that again this week, but with ground turkey. I'm getting two things of cream cheese, and I'm getting two enchilada, actually a big can of enchilada sauce. Um, so, I'll try to update you on a future video how it turned out. Uh, but you see I'm putting those veggies in. And these were like a steam bag. Um, I don't know. I like canned veggies. <laughs> I like my veggies mushy. So, uh, that might have been the other thing. is I just want to barely even know that. Like, I don't want the texture to be much different. I just wanted it all to be mushy. So, anyway, like I said, I don't have a rolling pin or I would have used that. But you uh, make these flat and then you cut them up. I'm using a pizza cutter. I felt like that would be the best way. And then I didn't want to show you every single one of those. So I'm doing the last one. And I'm going to put it on top. And then I forget to show you the end result. So I'm very sorry. But that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, you will see it with all those dumplings on top. But I did forget to get a final view of it before we ate it. But it was pretty good. Maybe a little less dumplings. A little less vegetables. The flavor was good though. So um, try it out. Maybe make a few changes for yourself and see if you like it. All right. Thanks everybody. Hope you try some of these um, recipes. And if you do and you like them, leave me a comment or uh, just comment and tell me which ones you intend to try so that I can, um, can talk back to you guys. Thanks.